I feel the Holy Ghost saying the storm is about over. Because all the stuff that you're in, it doesn't matter what you're going through just as long as you know who's going with you. Can I get a witness? And every time that I'm in the storm, I have to sing a song to the Lord. Because pressure comes and sometimes I forget, but I have to say this to the Lord sometimes. What ever me Queenie However things turn out to be as long as he's in control work out for me. Can I get a witness in here tonight? Come on, choir, help me sing this tonight. Whatever whatever you do for me it don't matter now. Things turn out to be just a long, just a long as you're in. I know, I know, things will work out for me. Before I leave you, I want to leave this message with you.
Thank you, Jesus. I believe the little things are working out for your good. Say I can. Say I will. Be determined not to sit still. Don't give in. Don't give out. Don't give up. No matter the plight, fight with God's might. Who will be your light in the darkest of night? Keep running toward your goal and keeping your eyes on the prize. Don't let today be your end. Say tomorrow, I will win. I will win. I will win. Hello, family. My name is Sonya Brown, and this is my husband, Daryl Brown. And we are so excited to be with you today for Motivational Monday, a way to kick off our week with some encouragement. Today, we want to talk to you about patience during a pandemic. Patience during a pandemic. As you all know, we are in the midst of some turbulent, turbulent times. And we just want to give you a little soul food, if you will, to encourage you on your way. So we have a foundational scripture for you that we're going to refer to throughout our conversation today. And it is coming from James chapter one, verses two through four, a very familiar passage of scripture from the King James Version. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. In other words, we want patience to work out what it is it's designed to do so that we can be mature, so that we can be complete, and so that we can stand on our own. So let's talk a little bit about what patience is, husband. Patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, suffering, Get this, without getting upset. Yes. We often have found ourselves in situations where we got upset because we couldn't endure. We got antsy. We wanted to know when it is going to be over. I've heard, uh, even myself, uh, I've asked the question, how much longer yes. are we going to have to ch change what we do? Uh, how long will we have to wear a mask? How long will we have to stay indoors? Yes. Uh, one of the reasons is why, um, from what I'm understanding, is why the virus is getting worse is because people can't stay in the house. Mm. And so wow. what it happens is we get antsy. And so what we've got to learn how to do is we got to learn how to have some patience during this time. Yes. Even before this, you know, we, we all go through different ebbs and flows in life yes and 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 what we have had to learn was even in the most difficult situations you got to learn how to just go somewhere and sit down <laughs> just sit down <laughs> it's gonna be all right yes and we, yes. we heard that we, we heard that uh that song on the way here yes. it's gonna be all right yes if you just go somewhere and sit down <laughs> It's going to be all right. I yes. promise you it will. Yes. It will. And so we just, as, as my wife said, we just want to encourage somebody during this time to just woosah. Yes. Just relax. Yes. And let patience do what patience does. Yes. We often talk about, I want more patience. Well, if you want more patience, then what you're asking for is you're asking for more Adversity. Yes. And the thing I always tell people is in the midst of adversity, we have a choice. Hmm. Either we're going to roll with it or we're not going to roll with it. We're going to roll with it or we're going to give up. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, that's your choice. Because the scripture we just read, let her make her perfect work. Yes. So you got to allow whatever God's doing in our lives. You got to allow it to go through the whole process yes. before you get to that finished product. Yeah. Yes. Wife? You know, husband, um, when we talk about patience being birthed through troubles, uh, 
I just think back to before we got married. Oh my. When uh, we've been married 17 years, family. and 17, um, she didn't put up with me for 17 years. <laughs> and um, we dated for three years before we got married. And during those times we were uh, working together. We worked in research and development. That's actually how we met. Um, we were healthy, we used to go on walks, or I would walk, Daryl would ride his bike, we were very active, we did a lot of things. Um, when we got married, we were able to purchase a home, we did renovations to our home, things were going very well. And that was back in 2003, and then in 2006, everything changed, we lost our jobs, and so income was greatly diminished. Uh, Daryl had to go on disability. And um, for those of you that know about disability, you know that the pay that you get for disability is not what it was when you were working. Um, in addition to that, uh, health challenges started to come. And so the things that we were able to do before, especially my husband, he just wasn't able to do anymore. And it was stressful. There were a lot of problems during that time in our marriage, but we made a decision to persevere, we made a decision to have patience, to endure, because we made a covenant. When we got married and we said, I do, we made a covenant for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. And even if you're not married, the thing that we want you to understand is that troubles are going to come. And so our goal as Christians is to learn how to be patient, to learn how to persevere, to learn how to endure during this time. So as we're talking about patience, as we've talked about the fact that it's perseverance and endurance, and we've talked about the fact that it's birth through trials, the next thing that we want you to understand about patience is that there are three areas in life that require patience. You need patience with yourself. You need to have patience in your relationships or with other people. And you need to have relation uh, patience when it comes to God and how you view God and the process that you're going through. So we're going to talk about each of these in detail. And as we go to the next slide, we're going to deal with this area of having patience with yourself. Husband, Go ahead and tell us about this. Well, I was thinking just the other day that in the process of patience, again, uh, as, as my wife said before, I was born with a uh, handicap, spina bifida. And when I really, it really started affecting my life in a very negative way. I had to learn how to have patience with myself and knowing that you gotta have a mindset that you can get to the finish line. You just gotta take your time. And what I had to learn was, it's not about how fast you go but it is about getting to where you have to go. And so I had to learn because now um, we're, we're together and there's a lot of things I can't do. She mentioned riding bikes. I can no longer ride a bike. Uh, I, I don't do well in the winter, so I can't shovel snow. And I would hate to have to see her do everything and I would just get frustrated on the inside. But then I had to realize you got to slow down. The object of this is getting things done. So I had to, instead of thinking about it, how to get things done physically, I now have to think about how to get it done mentally. And we all need a, we all need a su support group. We all need yes. a support group. Yeah. Uh, the other minister who, ministers who have preceded us, yeah. they're part of our support group. Yeah. Um, but what I did was, instead of sitting around and crying about what it is that I can't do, God began to do things that was amazing to me. Again, like 
shoveling snow. Uh, Sia still from time to time has to shovel snow. But we have a neighbor that just dropped out of the sky. Yes. <laughs> and cause it, it's, it's unbelievable how, how helpful he's been to us. Mm -hmm. And now we barely even have to even worry about the snow. Yes. And so God will always find a way to be there to help. But you got to have patience with yourself. Yes. One of the things I've learned about not having patience, well, you always have to be thinking, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Yes. This don't work well, but this does. Yes. And so I had to keep my mind right. And when you keep your mind right, you can learn to have patience with yourself. Yes. And as we look back at that slide, um, having patience with yourself means that you're going to give yourself room to make mistakes. I mean, we all make mistakes and we don't want to beat ourselves up when we make those mistakes. We want to have some appreciation for personal growth. If you know that you have grown, even if it's a little bit, celebrate those. That's a win. We have to look at ways to celebrate the achievements that we make, even if they're small. This is how we yep. develop patience, you know, with ourselves. And the last point on this slide, which is to me so important, you have to be able to forgive yourself. None of us can go back to the past. I'm sure if we could, all of us would go back and change something. We can't do that though. So we have to learn how to forgive ourselves. If we have a relationship with the Father, He promises that He will forgive us. That means we have to learn how to forgive ourselves so that we can move on. When we continue to hang on to our past mistakes, our past sins, our past failings, then we are hostage to the past. We are not free to move on to the future and walk in the destiny that God has laid out for us. So family, I just want to encourage you to have some patience with yourself. That was one thing I struggled with. When we, we get in situations, because I was always taught that being the head of the house, you have to make sure things run well. Mm -hmm. And when we ran out of job, when we ran out of all that stuff, and the cupboards were bare. Yes. I'm not talking about our cupboards, but I'm talking about resources. Mm -hmm. um, I blamed myself for that for a lot of years. I beat myself up, even still do now. Uh, when I make a mistake, I'm like, why did you let that happen? You got you to gotta chill out. You got to chill out, especially when it's a new situation like pandemic. Mm -hmm. This generation has never seen a pandemic before. And so the rules have changed. So you got to learn how to not be so hard on yourself That's right. when things go in the opposite direction. That's right. All, it goes back to your mind being clear. When it starts going in another direction, now you got to figure out, well, how do you do this differently? To change it. You got it. You got it. You got to always, again, I can't make this clear enough. Your mind has to always be open to change. Yes. And as long as you have the devil in the back of your head saying, see, I told you, you messed up this, you messed up this. Hmm. You got to wipe that out. Jesus. You got to wipe that out. Yes. Yes. The only, the only thing that we can do is do the best we know how to do. And once we do the, know how to do the best we know how to do, that's it. That's it. You got to, you got to forgive yourself. Yes. Did, it messed up, but did you do the very best you could? You did. Move on. Yes. So having patience with our sin, we need to learn how to have patience with others. I mean, this can be difficult. This is patience in our relationships. Listen, we are in a situation where we are literally stuck together during this pandemic, especially when we were in the initial quarantine stages. So whether you are married or single, whether you are a parent or not, chances are you found yourself in a situation where you were with your loved ones 24 seven. That can be a stressful situation. So 
having patience with others means that sometimes we have to be willing to accept people for who they are. Sometimes with our loved ones, we see so many great things in them. We see so much potential that we keep trying to push and push and mold and shape. But sometimes it's too much. Sometimes it becomes overbearing. Sometimes we push our loved ones away. This I have definitely see it with parents at times just become a little too overbearing in their children's lives because they see this bright future for them. But we have to allow people to grow into what God has called them to be and not try to form people into who we think they ought to be. This is not our job to change anybody. It's God's job to do that. And so a part of having patience with others and having patience in relationships is to allow God to do the work in the person and for us to just be there as a support system. One of the things I had to learn, one of my favorite phrases is now, when it comes to other people, and even life itself, I've had to learn how to deal with things as they are and not as I want them to be. I promise you, my life is nothing like I thought it was going to be. And because it turned out the way that it has, um, I never thought I would ever be in a situation where couldn't ride a bike, couldn't do this, couldn't do that, couldn't do this. And I started losing patience for other people. But really, it was me. And so you got to learn how to just stay calm, and when people don't reach your expectations, bring them down a little bit. Because it's a possibility. Your expectations of other people mm -hmm. might be too high. Yes. And it's unfair to them to have these high expectations of them yes. and you never told them. Mm. Come on, somebody. So you got to <laughs> learn yes. how to lower the expectations. I don't wear a cape, so why would you expect everybody else to wear a cape? Mm -hmm. As, as I told my doctor not long ago, he, he, met, he, he was telling me what he thought I was capable of doing. And I told him I took the cape off and I now reside in the phone booth. <laughs> and so you got to lower, even though I'm, I have high expectations, don't get me wrong, because the Bible says you can do all things. Oh, yes. But again, when it comes to other people, you got to be more understanding because they may not be where you are. And a lot of the times we're not where we think we are oh, Lord. until something happens. Then you realize, oh, I'm not where I thought I was. Yes. So it's a learning. It's a learning. But you got to be patient. Yes. You got to be patient with people. Uh, I, when we first got married, um, I can remember very clearly. Um, I, I took her to my doctor. And I said, I want you to tell her everything. And he's been my doctor since an infant. I was an infant. And he's still my doctor to this day. And he would tell her, well, this is how this is supposed to go with spina bifida, blah, blah, blah. All the bad stuff. And she would, she would nod her head. And then he would continue. And then I asked her later on, because I could see it on her face. She said, I said, um, what do you think? She said, what is it's a little overwhelming, but I can handle it. But what had to happen was she had to experience it. Yeah. And there were times where I could see on her face, it's too much. So what I had to learn how to do was back up a little bit. Learn how to do some stuff for yourself. And be patient again with them and yourself. Because one of the things we're going to we learned in this life, pandemic or not, we all need somebody. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. We don't live on an island. Even yeah. as much as some people want to live. We don't live on islands. Yeah. Everybody needs somebody. Yeah. And when people are trying to be helpful. Allow them to do what it is they have the capacity to yes. do. Sometimes we have people. We want them to do, st they, not, they don't have the capacity to yeah. perform this. So you got to have patience. Right. Us being in the same house, 
I stopped getting my feelings hurt because every time I would see this look on her face, my feelings was hurt. And I was like, okay, you have to man up. This is new for her. And even as I got older, I'm like, so I'm dealing with stuff now I never dealt with. And so I have to learn how to be patient and not expect her again to put her in a box and expect her to be this big old thing when it just takes time. Yes, sir. Takes time. I'm hard to live with. Not only just physically, but mentally. I wouldn't want to live with me. And so you got to learn. You got to learn. You got to have <laughs> some patience. Okay? You got to have some patience. So, uh, you know, a lot of people say I joke about a lot of stuff all the time. You know, you got to have, you got to, that's one of the things with this whole patience thing. You got to learn how to laugh yes. at stuff. You got to yes. learn how to laugh yes. at yourself. Yes. Because either you're going to laugh or you're going to cry. Yes. I cried too long. Yes. So you got to have a sense of humor about this foolishness because this is what I, I it's called spina bifida, uh, what I have in the medical book, but I call it foolishness. Yes. And you got to learn how to deal with foolishness. Yes. And so, yes, that's, um, I, 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 she's here to keep me on task. <laughs> Because I can get all over the place. That's okay. I can talk about this stuff all day. Go That's ahead. That's all right. That's Go all right. Go ahead. If we look Go ahead, at wife. that slide, um, it's just something else I want to say about that. You brought up so many beautiful points, husband, that I really agree with. But when we're having patience with others, something else I want us to look at is we need to allow people the opportunity to have that productive struggle. You know, as a, as a teacher, I'm a math teacher, many of you know, and we have what's called mathematical practices. There are eight of them. They are set forth by the Common Core State Standards. And one of them is persevere in solving problems. Persevere in solving problems. This is something that we are supposed to be developing in our students. Give them the opportunity to have challenging problems that they, have, they can have room to make mistakes and learn from those mistakes. Well, that's not true just for students persevering and solving problems. That's true in life. We have to learn how to struggle and learn from the struggle. The struggle is not a bad thing. It's uncomfortable, yes. Sometimes it's painful, yes. But it's there to produce something in us. And again, this is where I really want to challenge parents. So many times we don't want to see, parents don't want to see their children struggle. They don't want to see their baby struggle. So they come to the rescue all the time. But when you do that, you clip their wings. They never develop the muscle that they need to make it in this life. So when we're talking about having patience with others, your loved ones, give them a chance to struggle. That doesn't mean that you don't love them because you've backed off. It means that you trust God enough to catch them when they fall and you be there to love them when they get up. The last thing I want to say, uh, we want to say about having patience with others is to make sure that there is a healthy respect for boundaries. If your loved one needs some space, give them some space. Daryl can tell you, when I come home from work, go ahead. <laughs> When she comes home from work <laughs> and she has a very stressful job, oh Lord, um, we we call each other. I call her wife. She calls me husband. Yes. So she comes in the room. Hey, wife. That's it. I don't say nothing else for a good half hour, forty-five minutes, because she needs space. That's my wusa time. Yes. We all need space. Yes. I, I can remember when we moved into our oh. house, I remember thinking to myself, this is more than enough room. <laughs> and then as time went on, I began to think to myself, we need a bigger <laughs> house. Ain't enough room. Ain't enough room. But you got to be able oh. to give some extra space. Yes. You know, I go based on looks. When I see that look, when I see that teacher look, I'm like, oh, I ain't scared of it though. Y'all. I just need y'all to know I ain't scared, but I'm not crazy. Either. I'm, I, and so I give her her space. Thank you, husband. And so we all need space. Yeah. We all need space. I never thought I would need space. 
I need space too. We all need space. We need time to time to figure out stuff. Yeah. You just never know. You might you might be married to somebody even during this time. Uh, as as we go through this pandemic, uh, they might have other concerns. So we got to give them time to think things out. Uh, things that she's telling me now that's going on with school. Um, she's got to do a lot of thinking during the day. Yes. And so I allow her time when she comes home to think things out. And then I don't always try to come to the rescue and, well, what you need to do is do this. No, yeah. we don't do all that. We don't do all that. Yes. We only do all that. Just give people time. Yes. Give people time. Everybody needs time. Yes. Excellent points. So we've talked about having patience with yourself. We've talked about having patience with others. Let's now talk about having patience with God or patience through the process. And the question you should ask yourself is what is your attitude when you are going through these troubles, when you're going through trials, what is your attitude? Romans 8, 28, that's my favorite favorite scripture but we know that all things work together for good for them who love God and who are the called according to his purpose so if we trust God and if we trust his word then we know that even though we're going through these trials even though we're in the midst of a pandemic even though we're in the midst of racial injustice even though we are in the midst of a uh, socioeconomic division, even though we're in the midst of a crazy election, even though we're in the midst of virtual school, even though we're in the midst of all of this, we as believers have to check our attitudes and we have to ask ourselves, what is the lesson that we are supposed to learn during this time? What should we be learning? What we should be learning is life happens. <laughs> yes. I think especially Christians this is why a lot of folks want to run away from the church yeah. because we think that once we become saved, life is going to be so different that all the struggles we had before, we will no longer have these struggles. Doesn't mean that. One of my favorite scriptures is now faith is <laughs> yes. the substance of things hoped for yes. and the evidence of things not seen. Oh, yes. Because we think that because we have faith, it means that these issues don't exist. Mm -hmm. That's not what the scripture is talking about. Scripture is saying because it exists, if it exists rather, I have given you everything you need yes. to get yes. through whatever it is that's in front of you. Yes. I was just talk talking to my father just yesterday and I said how when things, when you use, when people would tell me I couldn't do something, I would just get fearful and not try. But because my, because of having to learn patience, having to learn endurance, now you tell me not to do something or I can't do something, you just set a fire. And so, again, what has to happen is you got to be able to um, deal with things. Thank you, see, she helping me out. With the process. It's a process. Mm -hmm. It's a process. My health. I wake up every morning with expectations. If it doesn't get better tomorrow, I'm looking for it to happen the next day mm -hmm. and the next day yes. and the, continuously yes. a process. It's a process. And I'm not just sitting around waiting on God to do something. I'm learning to eat differently. Yes. I'm learning. I exercise three days a week. Yes. You got you got to put something behind that faith. You got to push. It's a process. Yes. And it's an ongoing process. Yes. Deal with the process, y'all. Yes, I love it. I love it. 
Uh, one other thing to think about when we're talking about having patience with God is, are we anticipating trouble? What do we mean by that? Matthew 5, 45, the, the last part of that scripture says that it rains on the just as well as the unjust. That means troubles hit everybody, no matter what your standing with the Lord is. So as believers, we should know that troubles are going to come, but they don't have to overtake us because of our relationship with the Father. So, Can I do yes, one more? of course. One of the things I learned with, with that is, again, having patience with the process. You're not what your situation says yes, you are. Yes, 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 yes. That's right. I have spine a bit for it, but that's not who I am. Yes. And so what I've had to learn how to do is to not allow the situation to dictate to me. I dictate to the circumstance. We yes. are as Christians. <laughs> we have the ability yes. to do that. Yes. We have the I can wake up and 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 it's just seems like it's going to be one of them kind of days. Mm -hmm. That's why it went here it it just became a uh, a uh, habit. That whenever I opened up, I would always say, this is the day that the Lord has made. Yes. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Which for me means I don't have bad days. I have difficult days. Yes. Because yes. God made the day. And yes. if he made the day, it's a good day. Yes. So you got to do what David did. You got to learn how to encourage, encourage yourself. yourself. I talk to myself <laughs> all yes. the time. Yes. Yes. So no matter what it looks like. Yes. No matter how long it stays, you can handle it. Yes. So to just wrap up, we're on our last slide here. Just to wrap up everything we're saying, we want to encourage you to hold on. We're talking about having patience during a pandemic. Hold on. When we practice patience, it produces fruit in your life and we have all kind of biblical examples we have Job we have Joseph we have David we have Ruth so the question now becomes what about you what are you going to do to develop patience during this pandemic and even when the pandemic is over how are you going to allow patience to have her perfect work in your life. It's up to you. This is your chapter to write. And we just want to encourage you. Sonia and Daryl, we want to encourage you right now because you have everything. God has given you everything you need to be successful in this journey and to live out this patience that we're talking about. So we're going to close in prayer. We want everyone to know again that God is awesome. Yes. God is. He knew this pandemic was going to come yes. before we even were thought of. Yes. Yes. But it's up to us on how we deal with it. You might have. We, we know people who have had loved ones to die. Um, we, we know people who have, have lost income. But we are a testament to no matter what it is you go through, God will be there in the end. And he's there during the process. So as we get ready to leave and we pray, success for everybody who is watching this, no matter where it is. Don't ever give up on God because he won't give up on you. <laughs> So, Lord, we thank you, we love you, and we appreciate you for allowing us to have this time to speak to people. And, Lord, we ask that you would just comfort those who are feeling comfortless. Lord, that um, they learned today that even when there's no food in the refrigerator or the cupboards are low, that you have the ability to fill them up. And, Lord, that... If someone is sick, Lord, that I ask that you would heal their, their bodies. And not only their bodies, Lord, but their minds. That they need to understand that it's only for a short amount of time. But even if it drags on, 
that Lord that they will have the patience to endure and to know again that all things work together for the good of them that love you and so Lord we thank you we appreciate you and we just love you so much all right y'all have some patience out there yes, after